Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. In our last video, we finally made our way out to the Botanical Lab and have been exploring everything except the Botanical Lab. And I also noticed when I was editing my last video that I missed something in Zoe's... I'm guessing that this is Zoe's house because she left all these things behind. So I had the three journal entries that I found, but I zipped right past this poster on the wall. So the poster says, A Terror on Monarch with Ruth Bellamy as Halcyon Helen, Spencer Woolrick as Chief of the Savages, featuring real monsters from the doomed world. Okay. I haven't been to Monarch. I'm not sure if I can, but maybe. But apparently I can steal the poster. I'm not sure what else I was expecting, but there you go. That all happened. But can I look at it in my inventory? Does it say anything else? The Masked Marketeer. That's the thing I picked up in the last video from her friend. Presenting the thrilling series finale of The Masked Marketeer, an Etherwave serial drama in 38 parts. And then the poster. A poster ready to liven up the walls of your ship. This might look real nice in one of the crew's rooms on the Unreliable. Ew. Interesting. Can I like steal this stuff to decorate? Okay, this is as far out as I get, I guess. And then I have a finger. I can really inspect a finger that's kind of messed up. But anyway, that that all happened. That that's something that okay, never mind. We're moving on. Moving on to actually go into the botanical lab and investigate it and talk to the person that we're here to talk to. And she's right there. At the little green dot tells me so. Oh gosh, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's, well, it's not Saltuna. And it's not a mach machine cannery. So this is just another door out, correct? Okay. I never talked to these guys over the fire. We'll go visit them in a minute. But I suppose, probably gonna get caught if I steal, but let's talk to Adelaide McDevitt. If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? Oh yeah, I have, uh, I always have questions. But <laughs> just who are you now? <laughs> well, you must be Adelaide. I have been called that among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobacco tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Thanks. Uh, I think I'll still pass, though. Uh, is this your greenhouse? No, dear. The garden belongs to us all. Life is the gift of the universe, and the universe yields its bounty equally, absent of prejudice. Okay. Surprised you managed to grow anything out here. Funny, never knew you could grow tripe in a garden. <laughs> uh, well, uh, let's go with the first one then, because the second one's a little offensive. The soil around the Vale went sour years ago, but I found a way to sweeten it back up. The secret recipe is a little bit of elbow grease, a dash of love, and a heaping pile of special fertilizer. Special fertilizer? What, um... What do, you, what do you mean? What are you using? Well, Reed sent me to make peace with you. Looks like you've made a home for yourself out here. Hmm. Well, let's go with the second one. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. I don't understand. Can't you just leave the planet? Or are you not even allowed to do that? 
your evil corporate overlords don't uh, allow for you to do that, I'm assuming. But anyway, why did you leave your old home? It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. Well, Reed sent me to make peace with you. Reed Thompson? Mm -hmm. You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Well, Reed asked you to consider coming back to town. He's willing to make amends. Did he say that? I mean, I don't think he really said that. I mean, he kind of hinted at it, maybe? I don't, I don't know. Something about coming back to town or losing power. I wasn't really listening. I, I need to play. I just need to, I need to, one game in the future, I need to just commit and be that, be that character, you know, be that, you know, original character. But you are living off power that belongs to the town, which I guess I'm going to take the power coupler for. So come back to the cannery and that's about it. Let's go with the second one, though. See if we can kind of make peace. I can kind of put words in Reed's mouth, right? Make amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. Hmm. Reed asked me to divert your power over to him. He mentioned a geothermal plant. No, maybe this is serious, lady. I'm about to cut off your power. You're doing this for Reed? Why? Well, I I need a power regulator. <laughs> your camp is a power regulator, and I needed to repair my ship. Just be honest. Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. I feel like you're manipulating me. What do you have against the town? You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. Dude, like, leave her dad out of it. Like, it's obviously very uncomfortable for her. Yeah, I don't like, much like you throwing that in her face to get me on your side. I'm all right. I ain't so fragile. That was unkind of me. I'm sorry, dear. What do you have against the people trying to make a living there? It's not much of a living. Every single person in that town has sold themselves to Spacer's Choice. The company owns them. Body, blood, and bones. You've been there. You've seen it. All anyone ever does is toil over a cannery. They give their lives for some heartless corporation, and then they're tossed into a Spacer's Choice brand cemetery. Yeah, you do have a point. But what, say I help you, what happens to Edgewater then? Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down, workers desert in droves, and our own little camp grows and thrives. Hmm. Hmm. You think Reed's just trying to spite you? You bring power to Reed's town and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it. He's counting on it. Well, I'll consider it. That's all I can really commit to. I trust you will listen to your conscience. I mean, assuming Heather has a conscience. <laughs> I mean, she may not side with you. And since she's me, I'm not sure I want to side with you. I mean, I could do a... Could do a playthrough where I just automatically don't side with any of the 
corporate overlord decisions, but that doesn't seem really, I don't know. It doesn't seem really something I, I want to do. Hello, deserter. Keep your wits about you, friend. Yeah, okay, that's it. That's all we got out here. Yeah, I kind of just want to make a decision based off the situation that I'm presented that, and the facts that I have in front of me. Like, you know, like I normally do. <laughs> and then live to regret it, as usual. And she is just all in here, so I can't really take anything. Employer rights. We read that one before. Only you can protect fourth quarter profits. And can we close this door? We can. Okay. Any other information here? Aha, a terminal. Okay, personnel files. Oh, we're gonna hack. Open first entry. So it's uh, Adelaide McDevitt's terminal. May the eternal bless my first endeavor. I've been, it's been two days since I walked away from life at the Edgewater Cannery. Fortuitously, the old botanical labs are still operational. Mostly the soil's sour. I'll do what I can, but I'm going to need some powerful fertilizer. Tired of having the taste of saltuna lingering on my tongue day in, day out. I want something fresh, something that grows out of the earth. We found another worker from Edgewater, ex-worker now. Desertion rates must be climbing. I'm not terribly surprised. Reed's style of management has always been tyrannical. I imagine an exodus is brewing. At any rate, the worker was in a sorry state. Fever, shallow breathing, delirious, must have been plagued. I set him right with a diet of greens. He was all better in a couple weeks. Physically, spiritually, he's one of our flock now. So it seems like they just need a better diet and this flu goes away, maybe? Experimental notes. I am hereby repurposing this botanical lab from its original conception as a gear in the soulless automation of the corporate machine. This greenhouse may look impressive, but like all Spacer's Choice products, it, 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 is, it is cheap and unreliable. I shall have to make some repairs with my own two hands. This place shall become a nursery. Before it was abandoned, I understood the Order culturalist failed to produce a single viable crop, something about the soil being too poor. I am determined to find a way. May the eternal smile upon my endeavors. And the last entry, flora are living things as sensitive to their environment as any breathing, thinking body. I contend that the crops in this region failed because the corporate scientists tending to them are cold, heartless, inhumane people acting on behalf of a sterile and inhumane power. I don't think that's how that works, but I can't grow anything to save my life, so I don't really know. One cannot expect your crops to flush with green and reach for the sky under these conditions. The soil is sour, it's true. I don't know quite how to explain that. I'm sure the scientists will say something about biology or the carbon cycle, but I can conclude after months of my own experimentation that the secret to a rich and wholesome garden is love, attention, compassion, and a natural fertilizer bursting with organic materials just as nature intended. What is your special fertilizer that we're not talking about? Hmm. Any other clues? I just want to read the notepads. <laughs> Compost. Hmm. We already we already been in here, I think, right? No, we haven't been in here. Sorry, Parvati, you stay there. I'm gonna permanently borrow some items. See, this one has a door, but you have a stall right next to each other. I mean, you could, it's sort of private, but not really. <laughs> not at all. Okay. Oops. I'm always missing stuff. Well, let me go talk to Adelaide McDevitt again. Oh, wait, there's a... I don't think I can read anything. Unfortunately, oh well. Let's talk to her again, see if she's anything else to say. Anything else I can do for you? Hmm. 
This might, sp this might sound strange, but I don't know where I am. That's not strange at all, dear. Few of us truly know where we are. The world can seem like a forest without end, and it is all too easy to lose one's way. But we must remember that being lost is the first step in discovering yourself. <laughs> no, I mean, I actually don't know where I am. This is the old botanical lab in Emerald Vale, on Terra 2. By the look on your face, I'm guessing you're not quite following me. Are you not feeling well? I ought to lay your head down if you're running fever. Hmm. Just getting my bearings. My pod landed not too far from here. <laughs> I was kidnapped by a crazy scientist and shot into space. But thanks for asking. Mm. I'm hoping this is all a bad dream and I'm still in hibernation. Uh, let's go with the first one, see what happens. Are you talking about an escape pod of some sort? Where did you say you were from? Uh, does the hope ring any bells? Is that a new settlement of some kind? I haven't kept news from outside the veil. Mm. You've never met anyone from the hope? There were thousands on that ship. Oh dear, I see what's happening. <laughs> You've been taking Adrena time. That stuff will burn right through your upper story, leave you raving and babbling. You ought to try some of my purgative tea. Won't cure what ails you but it will distract you for a spell. Hmm. You don't believe me then? Maybe I do. I don't know yet. Growing up, I heard my folks talking about the hope. Always believed it was just a story we told ourselves to keep our spirits up. Listen, don't you worry about what I think. That's not important. Worry about what the board thinks of you going around talking about Lost ships from decades past. Hmm. Why? I haven't done anything wrong. You carry on about coming here from another world, and people will talk. Talk leads to questions. Ask enough questions, and the board comes answering. That's right. But asking questions is not a acceptable personality trait. I get that. But I'm not afraid of the board. No. But the board may have reason to fear you. Fair enough. All right, let's talk about something else. I'm listening. And uh, when we first talked, you assume I'd come to live here. I am getting old, you know. These two lamps of mine are not as bright as they once were. Or I might have seen you for what you are. And what's that supposed to be? Remains to be seen. <laughs> might be the woman that saves the veil. Might be Reed's personal gun hand. I don't know. Save the veil? People around here lack the strength to effect change. Or they have the strength, but not the will. You seem to have both. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Flattery won't work on me, but why are you telling me all this? A little prattling never hurt anyone, dear. <laughs> you might even catch a little sense, if you listen close enough. I can't stop you from conducting your business down at the plant. I just want you to know that if you take our power away, you will have brought an end to our way of life. Well, can't you still keep plant vegetables without power? I mean, like, it might be harder, but... I don't... I don't know. If Reed's making an offer in good faith, you should consider it. She should consider it. I mean, like, you can still grow your vegetables and live separate, but, like, maybe work together and for a better life. I just... Why does it have to be one way or the other? I mean, I get it. Why? But anyway, um, you could always continue your way of life back in town. Not under Reed's watch. He and I would come to blows within a day, and he would never tolerate my tending to a garden. This is my home. It will be my home even if Reed cuts our power. Simple as that. Hmm. You and Reed obviously have some sort of history. That's because Reed was my boss. I was the cannery's one and only flavor specialist, you see. Remember that limited run of white chocolate saltuna? That was all me. That sounds disgusting. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. But there's obviously more to it than that. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away. 
But Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. That... Hmm... She did leave, but, like, her kid died, and she blames Reed, and he runs the town. But there were also how many... Uh, a bunch of other people there that you could have stayed and tried to help. But I am guessing Reed has his side of the story, too, right? I could not possibly care less if he does. But you're surely welcome to ask him. Anything else? I'm listening. Okay, I guess that's it. I should go ask him. Can I talk to Parvati? Why don't you come over here? Let's have a conversation away from Adelaide McDevitt. Something you need? Well, Thomas apparently seems very fond of you. He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. <laughs> I don't think he wants you to think of him as a puppy. Yeah, that boy is pretty much head over heels for you. I'm just glad he's alive. That he's okay. I mean, when Mr. Thompson said he was fired, we all expected the worst. If he wants to learn about engineering, we should help him get those data pads he wants. I'd like to do that for him. Okay. Well, I guess let's get back to it. All right, so comes now the power updated. You delivered Reed's message, but Adelaide refused to return to Edgewater, head to the geothermal plant, and redirect the power to either the town or to the botanical lab. I kind of want to talk to Reed Thompson again. I don't know if it's going to actually do anything, but I kind of want to... See if I can get his side of the story about what happened between him and Adelaide before I make my final decision. I'm kind of, I'm actually not sure what to do, to be honest. Because eating fresh vegetables is 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 better for you than just tuna. Um, but a lot of people would not do well out there, I don't think. And she really seems to hate this town, like a lot, which is understandable. But like, is that gonna extend to the people who stayed and did desert pre-losing their power? Anyway, let's talk to Reed. My offer remains standing, should you reconsider. Hmm. Hmm. I wanna talk to you about something? Let's Go try ahead. that. Okay, I guess that was nothing. Well, that was a wasted trip. Oh, well. Okay, well, back to the botanical lab we will go because that is the closest fast travel point, fast travel point to where I need to go. Okay, so we need to do a couple of things. First thing we need to do is, I think we're gonna go over here and take care of a few kindred spirits. That is the quest that we got from this lady here, Grace Romero, she wants us to go bring Zoe back. We have all the stuff to do it, I think. My my runny and never runny out of any stamina, I suppose. Pretty great. Wonder if marauders respawn. beasts just roar in the distance okay here she be hi zoe what i wouldn't do for a wentzworth well i have been sent to find you dear why adelaide wants me back on garden duty or something thanks but i'm not going anywhere this is where i belong well, Stefan told me about your favorite cereal. So you tracked me down just to gab about the mass market here? I am impressed. Well, Stefan wanted to watch this with you. I see what's going on here. 
I'm being bribed. Well, it's working. I can't say no to my favorite cereal. I'll take my stuff and head on back, I suppose. Grace is going to be glaring knives at me, so I've got that to look forward to. <laughs> okay, bye. That was quite easy. So... You convince Zoe to return to camp, Grace will want to hear the good news. Well, let's fast travel back to camp. Back to the botanical lab camp, anyway. And Grace is back here. And then let's talk to her. What is it? Well, I talked to Zoe into coming back. We didn't always get along, but I'm glad to know she's safe. What happened, anyway? I. I told you, she joined up with a band of marauders and became the queen of the marauders. <laughs> Something about wanting to be an outlaw. I'd rather not get into it. That, let's go with that one. <laughs> you pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you. Mm. Oh gosh, <laughs> so stinking loud. You might be able to convince Adelaide to go back to town, maybe. I don't know what you did to talk some sense into Zoe, but I appreciate it. You're welcome. I guess that's it. You're now friendly with the deserters, but let's look at these things. These things mean the quest. Uh, long tomorrow? No, a few kindred spirits. So you got Zoe to abandon her plan and move back to the camp. And I need to level up, but I'll do that in a second. Is she back back? Like, is she here somewhere? Let's talk to Stefan. Zoe says she fought her way out of a marauder camp with her own bare hands. <laughs> no. No, she didn't. She didn't know such a silly thing. She stood there and smoked. Is she here now? She is here now. Home is where the heart is. Marauders took that saying a little too literally. It, are you okay? Got the strangest craving for Adrena time. Got the strangest craving for Adrena time. Is there anything else in here now? No? She's just like, all right, I'm done. I'm just gonna sleep. Well, that's that, I suppose. Okay, well, I wanted to look for the fistful of digits. That's over here. So let's try to hit that area and this little compound over here and then we'll come to the geothermal plant place. Look, they got chickens. I can talk to the chicken. Thankfully, it's not talking back because that would be strange. <laughs> oh, that's for the turn. Oh, I guess I could have turned them in when I was in town. Oh, well, it's fine. We came up here already. There's the plant. Strangely pretty to look at. The fire is coming at the top. Okay. Edgewater Geothermal Plant, from the planet to your living room. Okay. It's so pretty. <laughs> I say it every time we play this game, but it's so pretty. Here they come. Why are you taking so long to reload? Yeah, it is. Oh, I had a new gun I wanted to try out. Um, it's a shotgun, I think, right? Yes, tactical shotgun hammersmith. Still trying to figure out which gun I want to use. Um, I think 
That way was to my fistful of digits. But here is just something else. Abandoned Spacer's Choice Settlement. See, they've got all these abandoned settlements that they're just not... What is that? Scrap Mechanical. I'm ready for this. Oh. No! Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Do that button. Did you get him, Parati? Oh, thank goodness. You got him. Careful, you're hurt. I am hurt. I'm gonna come over here for a minute. Oh, it's not dead. Whew, that was close. We did. Don't like the shotgun. <laughs> okay, so shotgun, oh. Spacer's Choice found a flaw in you. Flaw tutorial. During your adventures, things may happen to your character that can trigger a flaw offer. Taking the flaw is optional, but doing so provides you with a perk. Oh. A drug addiction. Great. So taking as many drugs as you have has turned to addiction, making you suffer withdrawal if you go too long without another hit. Drug addiction, withdrawal, dexterity minus one, perception minus one, and temperament minus one. I don't think I want to do this. Not on my first playthrough right now. I'm, I'm okay rejecting said flaw. Um, all I'm using is the... All I'm using is Adreno. Well, I do use it quite a bit, though. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm constantly just wandering into places that I probably shouldn't without planning and scoping it ahead. I need to, I need to play better. <laughs> it's an ongoing process. Nope, maybe. There's a man's hand. I think that's Parvati. Par I'm just, Parvati's carrying me through this game right now. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's it's really kind of sad. These guys have just kind of been left to slowly rot away until there's no one left, really. Right? It's sealed, but I want to unseal it. I want to get inside. Is there anything over here? No. How about over here? I've had some luck with boxes and such behind buildings, so it's worth checking out. There was something here. Oh, it's the vending machine. Can I buy any of the good stuff yet? No, you can't. <laughs> that jingle could get stuck in your head so easily. Hmm. I mean, is there a way to make it so Reed isn't in charge anymore? But I don't know if I would want Adelaide to be in charge. Like I said, she does not seem to be a big fan of the town. Like she's taken her extreme dislike of Reed and is applying it to everybody. Maybe I don't know. I, I could be reading into things way too much. Maybe there was something here. Oh, there's bread. Frozen dinner. Mm. Yum. Okay. I want to try and climb up on the roof. So I feel like 
Nope. Is there nothing up there? I, I'm totally jumping high enough to get up there. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Let's get down <laughs> before I get stuck. I think that's just about it. I just, again, I know I say it every time. I really like these little houses. They're so cute. Very frontier style with the metal and everything. And you know, I dig it. It's nice. Okay, let's go look for that digit. What was that used for? I wonder. I mean, they've got all this equipment just lying around over here that they could probably have fixed or get fixed or fix themselves, you know? And I feel like they're just not using all of their available options. Oh, let me level up real quick. All right, I leveled up. Did uh, put some points into defenses a little bit and I also took the perk to give myself some extra health because I feel hardly squishy, which makes sense. I'm running around in armor that's probably not the best right now. Let's save and scope out a little bit. There's Doc Maybell. What is that? Oh, that's just the stuff from the geothermal plant. How many other people are maybe over there? Can you hold still? Please, thank you. Oh, they're gonna come. Let's uh, reload my big gun. Oh, that is reloaded. Oh my. What happened now? I mean, I'm waiting for like a monster to come land on me or something. What happened to all you guys? Beasties? Marauder hideout discovered. Oh god, Parvati. <sighs> Scaring the crap out of me, lady. Here we go! Yep, here we go. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Is it already? Really? There's a hooligan. I love that word. It's such a good word. I don't remember. Fun times barrel. I don't know. There's so many like different like options for, you know, drinking perks and whatnot. I need to find this person's finger. <laughs> it's so wrong. It just seems so wrong. Doc Maybell. Finger taken from Doc Maybell, a marauder from the Emerald Vale region in Blad on Stick. So sharp that it cut some letters out of its own name. <laughs> okay, sure. All right, so we have all of the turn ins for Fistful of Digits, so we could go turn that in and then come back and do the 
geothermal plant, or I could do the geothermal plant first. Oh, I don't know what I want to do still. I'm a little on the fence. Um, let me fast travel and turn this in and get that done real quick so we can fast travel back out relatively quickly. Plus, I should probably empty my bags. I mean, not sell stuff empty my bags, but um, what's going on here? I've been feeling pretty low these days. I know how you feel. Yeah, we, you guys keep saying that. That's... I've never actually been in here. Seemed scary from the outside. It's fine. She's she's just she's obnoxious, but in a funny way. Hello, Constable Reyes. Something to report? Yes, I'm I'm here to turn in a bounty. We pay by the finger. What do you have for me? It's so weird. Well, I have Guillaume Antrim's finger. Gil Antrim. Real name, Guillaume. Duly processed by a freelancer on behalf of Spacer's Choice. I remember him. I was just a kid last I saw him. Shame. I'll just need your signature here, 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 and here. Got any more fingers for me? Yeah. Doc Maybells? Mabel Burgess. Age 37. Right or left-handed? Let's just say no longer applicable. That's horrible. I remember Doc <laughs> Burgess. Conducted my physical every fiscal quarter. Guess she couldn't keep her hands off her patient's medicine. Still one outstanding bounty. If you've got a finger, I've got the paperwork. And uh, how about Bernie Cotton's finger? Here we are. Bernie Cotton. Cause of death. Let's just say overwhelming physical trauma. <laughs> Bert was the local preacher before Max took over. Always was quick to remind us that we all get what we deserve in the end. Well, that's all three. I must remember to requisition some more fingerprint to ink. Here's all the compensation you've earned, plus a bonus. Oh, a junior deputy constable's badge. <laughs> you've done such a bang up job hunting down our former workers that I thought it only proper to deputize you. Congratulations. Thanks. How did so many of your people end up marauders? Yeah, I've been wondering that. Let me stop you there. It is official Spacer's Choice policy that all marauders, regardless of prior affiliation to the Spacer's Choice brand, no longer qualify as our people. Um, sounds like the marauders have been a problem for a while. Ever since the company first settled the veil. Life's good out here, but it ain't easy. Some folk can't keep pace with the demands of frontier life. Not everyone's cut out to work in Edgewater. Some turn deserter, some turn marauder. None of them get my sympathy. <laughs> yeah, I heard one of your workers shot himself, Eugene, I think. Oh, I want to ask that. But I want to ask about Adrena time. Let's go with the Adrena time one first. Everybody likes Adrena time. It is the finest medical drug ever developed by Spacer's Choice. Much better than that crap anti Cleo petals. Sure, a little too much Adrena time can bring out the violent animal in you, but if overdosing on Adrena time turns you into a lunatic, you have only yourself to blame. Um... Says so right on the warning label. Violent psychosis is a well-documented and legally accounted for side effect of Adrena time. Okay. What's on your mind? As long as your questions fall within the acceptable margins of curiosity. Okay, I guess that's it. Should have asked about the, the guy before while I have the chance, but there we go. We have completed a fistful of digits. You killed all three marauders and collected the bounties on them. What is my reputation looking like now for Spacer's show? I'm still just friendly, still just friendly. Okay, well. Almost lost a finger in the cannery today. <laughs> At least you got your health. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. Let's talk to Abernathy, since we're here. I had a note about that. Hello, Martin. You want to mingle? Go try the cantina. Sorry, Abernathy. I gave the anthracillin to someone else. You what? But why? I was dependent on you. Does it feel good? Robbing an old man of his last shred of hope? Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, but I did what I had to do a little bit, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, we're going with the first one, though, this time around. Betray a man in his final hours? Of course. I understand. Hell, I'd probably do the same to you, given the chance. So, you just here to watch me die, or what? Oh, I am... Um, bye. <laughs> yes, I'm here to watch you die. And yeah, I'm here to bring you misery. Let's see if Esther has anything else interesting to say. I appreciate what you've done, but we shouldn't be seen together. I know. There's a, there's a conspiracy afoot, right? Is the, Are any of the sick people any better? How you feeling, Rosemary? I don't want any trouble. Esther said she was going to distribute some medicine to those who needed it. Esther's got medication? How? Did the boss get a new shipment? I'm sorry, it's just I thought we couldn't spare the medicine. Nope, I'm sorry. I can't accept help from Esther. If I deserved treatment, I wouldn't be here. Ugh. You, you're wrong. Why? You're not doing yourself any favors pushing yourself like this. I heard the company's looking to promote healthy workers. Uh, huh. Hmm. I'm not doing the intimidate option because I said so. I kind of want her to feel motivated to get a promotion because I feel like that's the only thing that might work because they're very indoctrinated into this spacer's choice life. I didn't know that. I guess the best thing I can do for Edgewater is get healthy. Dead workers can't do much except fill a grave. All right, you made your point. If Esther offers to treat me, I won't turn her down. There we go, finally. That's it? How about, how about you, sir? Boss won't let us have any Adrena time. Oh, well, Esther's gonna hook you up. Supposedly, allegedly, so, something like that. Okay, let's check in with the barber, maybe? Oh, I cut my own hair. But Conrad sells real good disinfectant. <laughs> okay. What can I do for you? Hmm. Go ahead. Questions, maybe? I'm told Eugene killed himself. What happened? Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes? but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse, and I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Oh. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. Okay. That's... That's horrible. It's a miracle of bureaucracy. If Eugene's death were filed as a suicide, we'd all pay the price for his crime. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. But did you make it up or did it like really happen that way? Like, it's very, it's very confusing here. Okay, so I caught up with him. Seems like everyone has something new to say, so let's check in with... What's her name here? Uh, Amelia Kim. Plague got you feeling woozy? Get yourself boozy with Spacer's Choice. Oh my god, that's awful. Please don't do that. Go ahead. Hmm. Nope. Nothing new there. I didn't want to do the crazy scientist thing. I feel like she'll think I'm actually crazy. I was hey, low. It's the visitor. Come back for another round? Eh. Oh, that's it, too. Okay. How about we go to the general store? I'm not allowed in here. Not since the vending machine incident. Holcomb, got my eye on you, girl. What 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 vending machine incident? What did you do? <laughs> Miss Holcomb ain't allowed in this establishment. Not since that little incident. What? What incident? Ask her if you care. I'm running a business here. I won't touch anything while we're in here, Mr. Moreau. I promise. Um. Go right ahead. Uh, uh, what, 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 ha what happened, Parvati? Where are we headed? 
You mentioned something earlier I wanted to ask you, you mean about. Not, not allowed in the store anymore? Yeah. That seems to be, there seems to be a story there. There was a, a kind of a thing, the vending machine, when I was 12. That was, you're 28, so that was 16 years ago? Yeah, you were a kid. That must have been forever ago. Sure, but folks got long memories around here. I've always been good with my hands, right? So I saw a lock on the machine and thought, oh, this must be how they refill it. But I had to know. So I did my thing. And next thing I know, there's a couple hundred bottles of zero G rolling out the front door and into the road. Oh. <laughs> Chuckle as an option. I can see how that could upset people. You pick the lock on the vending machine. <laughs> I'm just going to laugh because that's actually kind of awesome. It's not funny. It is funny. Right about then, a bunch of loaders came rolling in the gate fresh off the Saltuna ships. And Mr. Thompson was up on the porch making a speech about how everyone would have to volunteer a third shift to get it all canned. Anyhow, you ever seen an auto loader run over a bottle of Zero G? No. It exploded all over him. I get it. Can we move on? No, go on. Tell me what happened. <laughs> exploded <laughs> all over Mr. Thompson. One bottle after another as the loaders went by. I was just shy of working age, so Dad had to pay all the damages. Oh, no. He was still angry at me. I can laugh about it now, but I just about puked up my guts in terror in the moment. That's the one time I ever made Mr. Thompson look a fool. Oh, I mean, it's a funny story, but it's sad at the same time. Oh, is the vicar still here? Can we talk to him? I wonder if the plague's ever going to pass. Just keep working. Work fortifies the spirit. <sighs> it does, but not when you're being worked to death, basically. He is still here. Aren't you supposed to be going to my ship? I'll meet you on the ship when you're ready to depart from Emerald Vale, Captain. Okay, Captain. It's like, it's like, ugh, I guess I'll call you captain. I mean, technically I'm not a captain. <laughs> so maybe he knows I'm lying. There was one other lady in here who had an actual name. Um, she was up here somewhere, right? Phyllis. Somebody's been spinning a tale about a lost colony ship. Talk like that'll get you reported real quick. Hmm. I'd like to talk to you about Eugene. I paid his burial fees, didn't I? Let the dead sleep. Conrad tells me Eugene wasn't his suicide. I found your letter to Conrad. Let's go with that one. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to go rifling through other people's correspondence? No. Well, technically, but... Anyway, you were planning on stealing Eugene's gold teeth. Excuse you. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein already belong to Spacer's Choice. And we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Never mind. I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, oh. What's on your mind? Oh, now we're now our friends again? <laughs> okay. Oh, can I ask her the other What's one? What's on though? your mind? Yeah. Conrad tells me Eugene wasn't a suicide. Let's try that. I don't understand. I found Eugene's body. I know the guy shot himself. Wait, are you telling me he was murdered? No. <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> oh, I want to do it, but like, oh, you have to ask Conrad for the details. I just thought you should know. No, let's go. Eugene overdosed on medication. The medication drove him paranoid. He was plagued? No. Oh, law, that's awful. I helped carry his body out. I could have been infected. This is all a little too much for me to take in. But I guess if Eugene wasn't a suicide, our town won't have to pay a penalty. That's the upside, but he still isn't alive. Where is Parvati? Did I lose her? Did she just... Like... Oh, there you are. Now, now you want to participate. Well, I think this might be where I'm going to pause for today. I didn't mean to come back here and start chatting to people. I just meant to come and turn a quest, but everyone had something new to say, which was very interesting. So I think I'm going to actually uh, clean up my bags a little bit, and then I'll head back out 
to get closer to the, what is it, the geothermal plant, and then we can work on those quests, but we will do that on Tuesday. Because like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I normally stop for the day. So yeah, that's my plan, and, and we'll I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> so as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe, and I will see you again on Tuesday with another new Outer Worlds video.